Facebook. Barbara, where is this running? On Facebook? On Facebook, yes. Live on Facebook. So they're on the Barbara Jean Lindsay? No, on Cosmic Oracle Show. Oh. And welcome everyone to the Cosmic Oracle Show. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay, and it is Friday, March 25th. And it has, I was off last week, so I was off planet doing a few things. I'm back now and uh, really happy to have our guest with us uh, this evening, uh, Michael Harrell from the Pork and Beans Show. I want to thank you too for giving generously to freedomslips.com and to Revolution Radio to keep us on the air since we're an all-volunteer station. So uh, no one receives any compensation for any of the uh, show tonight and, uh, and we're here only because of your generosity. So please just go to freedomslips.com, that's freedomslips.com and give whatever you can, $5, $10 to keep us on the air. And you might want to look at the patrons. 
um, account. You could be a patron and pay so much per month and, uh, and uh, help us out that way as well. So thank you in advance for your generosity. Uh, this is our seventh year uh, running the Cosmic Oracle Show and I'm still really happy to do it. I still really enjoy doing it. And so, um, uh, and I also want to thank our sponsor, esoterra.us. That's E-S-O-T-E-R-A dot U-S. Uh, that is, I'm the founder and CEO of a, um, an online mystery school, a school where we teach you how to uh, tune into your intuitive abilities and, um, and uh, be with other like-minded people who are into that sort of thing. So um, thank you to Esoterra for uh, sponsoring the Cosmic Oracle Show this evening. We do have new classes starting April 12th on Tuesdays uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. <coughs> and, um, and we have a few seats left, so you're welcome to come and um, take our classes and expand your consciousness and open your heart and, and see what you find. So thank you uh, for uh, that in advance. Uh, Esoterra, again, for supporting the Cosmic Oracle Show. And I would like to tell you a little bit about our guest, Michael Harrell. Uh, and I always say it's Michael Harrell, right? I caught myself today. I always want to say Harrell like Gaudiel or the angels, you know, where you say the Raphael. angels. <laughs> but it's Michael Har Harrell. Harrell, so, yeah. Yes, and so I've known Michael for a while now. We've never actually met, but I feel like we've known each other. I've taken some of your, I took your, um, your class that you offer on um, on Facebook uh, for the people, and um, if you want to talk a little bit about that, and I, I know that Helen and I actually did some sessions with you, and it was really well, that was wonderful. fabulous. It was. It really, really, truly was. Yeah. So, so welcome to the show, Michael. You inspired me. Th Hi, everybody. I'm half of the Pork and Bean Show. I'm Mr. Beans. Yeah, we might turn it up just a little bit, Michael. Oh, my mic. There you go. That's just a little better. better? Yes, that's much, much better. Thank you. Oh, I'm talking to the wind. <laughs> Part of the magic. Well, um, I don't know where, where we can start here. You, you said before the show about earth magic. Da, 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 da. I, I know. I was just kind of thinking about that it's, today. You know yeah. why? Huh? I, 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 you know, I'm an avid reader. I don't know about you, but I'm reading. I'm an, I'm an, I'm a nil reader. I don't read reader. much. Okay. I did not... at one point in my life read a bunch, uh -huh. but not so much anymore. Yeah. I'm an avid reader. And so this book came, <laughs> um, it's called Earth Power Techniques of Natural Magic with Scott Cunningham. I don't know if you know of any of his work. No, put it right in front of your face. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, in front of your face. Oh, uh, there we go. There there we Earth go. power. Well, that Earth looks pretty power. fun. It's really cool. And I mean, he's pretty an amazing dude. And um, he's since passed over the rainbow. But um, he left 55 books, Michael. Oh, man, this that's that's uh unbelievable what, 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 what goes on with people that be able to put out 55 books i have no idea i have no idea you know i have i i can't i yeah, i that mean that mean for, they must read like 20 books or, or 50 books or even 100 books for every book that they write you know what i mean in order to I, I, compile must, it all i don't know he must have been more of a hermit you don't you think in a way too, to write that know. many books like that i don't to have know the time to do that but that's I mean, like preston did it i think he's up around 20 books now is preston up to 20. yeah Holy something crap. like that i can't i'm i did two in a pamphlet okay that's about my my major and an outline of a another book that i swear i would finish by the end of the year but i haven't i haven't really well, that, there you go. Well, let's talk about that kind of earth magic, and that's a, that's an example of of earth magic. Yeah. How can some people tune into a certain energy or be 
inspired and the inspiration is so strong that they can gather up all this information and put it in a coherent context and then write books about it. To, to, to be that tuned in to and focused, right? Yeah. To have that much of a passion, I would think it would have to be, you know, that's why I've been doing this show for seven years. I have a passion for it. And yeah. you have a passion for pork and beans and how long <laughs> you've been <laughs> You do, you know? Because our time here is precious, right? Uh, yeah, you know, it's like, you know, Joseph Campbell says, follow your bliss. You know, you you have a thread of excitation of in inquest, interest and inquiry. And you follow those inquiries and interest. And then what what gives you a little buzz, what, what, what goes, oh, wow, that's cool. So you learn more about that. And uh, that's like following your bliss. I think that's one of the principles of... of um, I don't know a better quality of life. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure about that. You know, like you with your UFO and and uh, that stuff. You, you go to not only you read books about it, interview people about it, but you actually go to UFO uh, conventions and stuff. And um, yeah. and and which is they're really powerful. You know, just uh, being around people who are uh, buzzing about the same thing. I don't think it really matters too much about the. the the topic, whether it's UFOs or Sasquatch or, uh, um, you know, and awakening, uh, uh, ascending, you know, or healing conventions, they're all passionate about what they're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's nice to get in that energy. That's what we were talking about. You yeah. Know, that connection with each other, where we connect and spark each other. Well, and then, then there's this earth magic, you know, and I, here I'm, I, I, I often just go back to the very beginning and it's really about thought and feeling. Thought is the creator, but feeling is what does the manifestation, brings it out into the world, right? Mm -hmm. so that's the man and the woman. The thought is the inspiration and the woman receives that, the feelings receive that, and then we'll give birth to whatever it is that uh, you can conceive. And that's magic, you know, that's kind of like the core of magic is thought and feelings. More specifically, thought connected to feelings and thought um, embracing feelings. So it is, it's like the Shiva and Shakti, the two, the two halves of the human, the female and the male. And uh, then when they come together, that's when... Uh, you're, you're like whole uh, and that's what like the uh, kundalini experience is all about is you right. have the masculine is in the head and then the kundalini energy raises up and turns on the brain and you know yeah. whatever it does and all kind of magic uh, revelations and, and cosmic oracle shows pop out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and and with that, there has to be a connection, right? There has to be a, it has a connection to something also, not only within itself or masculine, feminine, or within itself, but it has a connection that helps it express it, right? Uh I think it's just like, like, you know, God is spirit and the darkness of the space is the great mother of everything and everything comes out of it. It's the same process on every level, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but sometimes it can have more, though, like, like, bam, you know, like you're in it. And it's like, like when you get contact, let's say contact with Sasquatch or contact with extraterrestrial or you have that contact it can just totally change your reality and oh all. i i see what you're saying yeah that you would have to call that grace or like a divine in, 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 intervention right yes, when exactly. something just come blindsides you out of nowhere and all of a sudden you're you're just like whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. 
you know, something happens, and and uh, I'm not going this way anymore. I'm going that way. What what? Right. You know, right. that that's real. That's very real too. And I'm not really sure what that is, except that maybe it's an agreement somewhere back in time, or maybe it's a maybe it's a, a nurturement or or something. But that's a pretty common story that people say. And, well, you know, I had this dream, and all of a sudden this thing happened, and. And uh, now I'm I, I quit being an accountant and now I'm over here studying the cosmic physics of consciousness. <laughs> exactly. That happens to people a lot. It does. It happened to me. That's for sure. You know, way back in the day, and and still continues to happen. You know. Oh, oh I unplugged. Let me make sure this is plugged in. Okay, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Do you do you know a guy named? Let me see if I can his name uh dan winter you know dan winter i don't mm -mm. dan winter should i know him what about him oh he's just uh one of those people who've like uh got the whole universe uh in physics and 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 uh and implosion and and uh wormholes and 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 He's got all that stuff in his head. He's got about five or six websites, and uh, and it's just incredible. And he, he's all about how about how it all works, you know, oh. about how you take okay. you take this field, right, and you spin it down into a little point, and then it just in that null point, you, it, it just expands out to. Uh, he's talking about portals and things like that. Oh, I love that. And, uh, there's pe that. there's there's people there's people and beings who can open these portals and how you can have portals inside yourself and that you know there's a, a sort of a natural phenomena of portals of of uh, this neg entropy or or centripetal power of the collapsing vortex and all that kind of stuff. That guy would be a really interesting fellow to have on your. Um, yeah, I'd to love have to. On. Have he's got that. charts and graphs, and he's one of those kind of guys. He's got oh, so much I information. He's that. got like a hundred graphs and charts. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But it, and it's all about magic, you know. It's like as yeah. soon as you get away from the material world, as the only thing. Mm -hmm. it, it, there again, it's like if your mind can say. If your mind can say there's more, then your will, your feelings will say, I'll give you more. And mm -hmm. there's no it. There is no end to more. There is no end to more. Exactly. More is. Is um, my term for the great mother of everything, mm -hmm. the great mother of everything. Everything is contained in her and um, everything emerges from her mm. and everything is her mm. the more mm -hmm. so uh, and, and i got this from when i was doing a lot of meditation mm. i did a lot a lot of meditation and then uh, then i had a dark night of soul i go whoop i'm a saint i'm a holy man what what, what how am i going to get a dark night the girlfriend left me lost my job the cat ran away uh you know and everything was like hey, what you know that's not right. I'm. I've been meditating for 13 years. How come I'm not a, you know, you're not supposed to have an imperfect life, or, right? right. But it was just that I was, I was in my head, and the only thing I could create with my head alone is a better head. That's what enlightenment is. Enlightenment is having a better head, <laughs> <laughs> having a head full of light. Well, they call it fire in the head, right? The old yeah. days. Oh yeah, that's that's real too. It's like it uh, is real. It's like if you imagine, and when the Indian people say a thousand suns, mm. if you could think of a, the sun that you can see with your eyes, just imagine a thousand that go all the way around you and all the way up and all the way down, and oh, you yeah. can't turn away from it. Yeah. Uh, and yet it doesn't burn you. It's kind of cool and invigorating and blissful. That's what it's like to have that light of life inside you. Yep. That's yep. a ter that's a certain type of magic too. The elevation of the elevation of the energetic body. Yeah. The reason and why it takes so long to do that it takes years to do it really, unless you're lucky. It's like a like a spontaneous kundalini or a spontaneous 
enlightenment. I know I met people like that. But the reason why it takes so long is it takes that long to, uh, for your body to be able to handle it. Right, your body has to acclimate to all of it. It's like, I t it's like taking a gallon of milk and putting it in a little thimble. Yeah, it's sort of like it's sort of like drinking um it's like like drinking coffee, right? You you just drink one cup of coffee and then uh you get used to that, then you drink two cups of coffee and you get used to that, and you get <laughs> three cups of coffee and then you get used to that. Then you switch over to, to cappuccino, you know, and it's like two cups of coffee and then coffee con la con leche, you know, and then latte. You know, and then and then, then you get to where you can drink like twenty or fifty cups a day and it doesn't bother you anymore. Yeah. Well, that's the downside. That's the downside of enlightenment too, because um, it's only half. Right? There's thought and feeling. Thought and feeling. Man and woman, light and dark. So you would think that enlightenment is the whole ball game. You would think that, but you would what think you that that think? was oh, oh there's light, that. there's light, there's bliss everywhere. I'm in <laughs> ecstatic, but it was. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's more. There's more. There's more. <laughs> That's where the fun is. That and it's like what? How could <laughs> how could being more than God, the light of God? How could there be more? Wow. Well, there's more. And the more is the, the the more is the mother and oh. wife of God. The mother of God and the wife of God is the more. Mm -hmm. And everything is more. You know, you can have a beautiful dinner, and uh, oh, I'm full. I'm full. And then somebody says, "You want some dessert?" Oh, okay. There's always room for more. <laughs> I think that's the way it is with magic too. You know. I, yeah, I think it's it's definitely a a connection that is unlimited, right? Because we have a this body; it's a physical body, a human body. And I mean, there's all kinds of different kinds of species, right? That have it's kind of like different books, right? All these different books with these different capacities to to educate or share or experience or um, change you grow you um, but definitely add something from the experience yeah well let you you would think okay you would think <laughs> we, we've got the internet right we've got right. the internet and we have access to literally all the information, you know, pretty much not, I wouldn't say all of it, but pretty much you can find out anything you want and you can find yeah. the yeah. authors and, and people commenting, commenting on things. And, you know, um, you would think that that would be the end of books, but au contraire, because <laughs> everybody's got more, right? They write more books, you know, <laughs> more books. There's books on uh, ESP and there's books on remote viewing and there's books on out of body experience and there's books on near death experience. And there, it just goes on and on and on. And, and you know, we used to we used to have just like the Big Bang, right? Mm -hmm. Now they have the Big Bang and then they have the, a holographic universe. They have a fractal universe. They have a geometric universe. They have an information universe, and then they have a numerical in universe, which is mathematical universe. Then they have the big bounce and the big, and then the steady state universe and the black hole universe. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. These are all things that have people who write books about the different kinds of, the different kinds and attributes of the entire universe. So our, our universe, you know, you just look out there. There's the stars and the, and the, and you know planets and things like that, right? Who knew that there would be like 10 or 11 or 12 different whole models for the universe? That's more. You see, that's the more. <laughs> that's the more. I keep thinking of that song. That's some more, eh? That's it, yeah. <laughs> kind of 
kind of like that. Yeah, I love it. So, and and we can all be experts if we want on on pick a subject and stay with it for a year, and you're probably an expert. You know, by the time yeah, now maybe in your mind. That's that's like that guy. That's that's like uh, that guy. Um, uh, uh, Dan Winter. He, that uh -huh. guy's an expert, and he he started off as an electrical engineer, and now he's talking about all those cosmic. <laughs> you know portals and and how things happen and how healing happens and and uh how intergalactic communication can happen you know if you have yeah. one of these uh you know it talks about the energy waves that are that are wave right and then longitudinal waves which are go like this uh -huh. go like this uh -huh. right and those waves can go across the entire universe anywhere there's yeah. no time in them Ooh, so, I like that. Yeah. Anyway, there's more. Okay. Now you would think you would think that if you had God realization and you're just light and bliss and yeah, and you get creatives too, you know, you can maybe, oh, yeah. you can, you can manifest yeah. things and stuff like that, but that's not the whole story. There's more. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. I have myself of, have had enlightening uh, moments, but to be with a light bulb turned on all the time, I never had that, so I can't really say for sure. But um, enlightenment has a different flavor to it, which is the masculine, and Kundalini, which is the feminine, has a different flavor to it. Yeah, I like it. I like I like that so far. <laughs> no, no complaints. Well, and then, okay, so you go from the thinking, the mind and its capacity, because it, it has a capacity, even though there's more, you have to run it through your mind. So your mind is singular and has that capacity to um, download all of that, right? And then to, to um, synthesize it put it where it needs to go so you don't go crazy, right? Because then you can get so much that I, I do believe that's true. Like um, you can get such a download and have that aha that it expands you so fast and you're so out there, it takes you a while to kind of come back in. And I know that from my own experience from way back, but, um, and then you can kind of let go and, and you can also take all of that, right? and put it up on a shelf for a while and kind of um, bring it out to play when you want to play with it. Yeah, there's this thing that people talk about. I think some saints talk about this. And that is, uh, it, is it is is that centripetal, right? Centrifugal is to spin out and mm -hmm. centripetal is to spin in. Mm-hmm. You talk about when you do meditation or when you have a mystical experience you're, or when you do math, magic, it's cent, cent, centripetal, right? It goes yeah. to the middle. Yeah. And, uh, and when you do that, <coughs> where you get to that stargate that is within you, mm -hmm. um, the other side of the stargate is an entire universe. There's you and this universe, this world now, and your physical size and shape. Yep. When you go through that barrier, uh, then an entirely new whole universe from the inf from where you went down to the point to the singularity, mm -hmm. it opens up to an entire universe within the side of you. And pretty yeah. much, uh, if you have your wits about you, you are the one in charge of that universe. Interesting. Like we yeah. have no power in this universe, but we are the god of that universe. Huh. I'm, I've never heard that before. Ah, I've never heard it before. Here it is on the Cosmic Oracle show, something that's never been heard before. <laughs> I, just because I didn't hear it doesn't mean it hasn't been here since day one. Either, so you know? Everything's been heard before. That's the other thing. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I think, you know, when you're saying that, um, when I came back from the NDE, I drew the double spiral symbol for a long time. And I, and I, uh, oh, like with the spiral on the top and spiral on the bottom like that. Yeah. It looks like, sort of like a, the hourglass, like an hourglass. Exactly. That's it's like, it. a, yeah, I've drawn it since ever since then. Um, and I, you know, I did some study, a little research on spirals and but I just, it's just a loop that I'll just here and then it. So it's like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, think. that's the, right. It's just a simple spiral. Right. So but that's the symbol that I brought and, back. Left hand and right hand, or two, right. Yeah. But if, but it's also if you that's that's looking at it one way. If you if you turn it another way, it's like a spiral of down to a single point, and then yeah, if you right, do it so like centripetal, that, cent centrifugal centripetal down to one point and centripetal at the other point. So that's how it goes. Yeah. It's, I forget so it, uh, one of those guys that, uh, yeah, <laughs> one of those guys, there's a lot of people who, uh, I don't really, really remember all the famous mystics, but yeah, they had a, there was an American mystic. He did, he did talk about that, about how light is, how light moves and how things happen. But in, in order in order for anything to get the ball rolling, your mind has to be able to conceive of it. And if your mind can conceive of it and you dwell on it in the right way until you feel it. So there's there's idea, the universe as an idea. And then the universe as will as what it is. I don't know if that's making okay. sense. So there's the the feeling is the reality. The idea is the possibility. Okay. So, so let's say, take, let's take that from an empath point of view. Where like, uh, most of my friends are empaths, you know, I'm an empath. And that's where you feel everything. Right. And you have to learn how to work with that so that those feelings all that doesn't um take over everything so you're left like just standing there with you don't know where to go what to do uh, you know because those feelings are so um and if you're an empath when you uh, make a prediction or you have a vision how often is it true pretty often pretty much almost it's way up there. It's way it's over seventy five percent. I would say more for probably most yeah, maybe eighty or ninety. Remote viewing can get up to ninety five percent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then and that's remote pretty... viewing is very different. It's very different. I don't know much about it. You do, but I don't know that much. I was thinking it might be fun to learn to see how they do it. Is it more of a is it more of a mind way to do it? So you're separate no, from your feelings? It, it is remote viewing is a technique to to distract your mind and um uh, and and express from your feelings what that's you feel. interesting yeah, that's what it is you express you you do this doodle automatic writing right you do these doodles and then then you look at whatever the doodle is you, uh -huh. you look at the doodle and you feel the doodle and what does that mean oh it means this or it means this near water and or there's a mountain Right, and you end up doing this little drawing, and each of those little drawings has a feeling to them. So you, it's really it's just a sophisticated way of people who have a lot of mind to be able to connect to their feelings. Right, right. So it's actually the same. All spiritual, uh, paranormal, psychic phenomena are the same thing. Uh, but different expressions, I would say. Because the like same, when, yeah, when you, yeah, but it's a different expressions, but there's the same, it's the same energy. You well, have thought, at that point. thought and feeling working together. Right, that point where you're connected to something uh, bigger than yourself, for sure. You connect to the more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The more is the truth. Right. Well, the, the, it, the feeling <laughs> of the feeling 
of the is the fact. Remember, I just remember I just got through telling you about how many uh, different universes there are. There's right. the there's right. the multi multi universe. There's the Big Bang universe, Big Bounce universe. There's the uh, steady state universe. There's the black hole universe. There's the information universe, which is Tom Campbell. Then there's the uh, uh, ge geometric universe. Everything's geometry. Then there's the numerical. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Mathematical universe. And then there's the data universe. Everything is just data points. Yeah. Anyway, so that's a whole bunch of universes, right? Yeah. And they're which all one of them, which which and all those are ideas. Mm -hmm. But there's a the actual universe is a, is the feeling. So each one of these people had an inspiration to, to model the universe according to their idea. And the, the mother of everything gave them the proof or the examples that that's the truth. Hmm. That's why these guys fight all the time. Because <laughs> the, the Big Bang people say, that's the truth. This is a reality. Look at all this proof we got. And the electric universe says, this is the truth. Look at all the proof we got in the, and the, you know, and, and they're, and they're, and they fight because we're in the truth because they feel the truth and the other guy feels the truth. And you know what I mean? But it's all, it's all the mother of everything, the more. And, and, and so would that be like, I'm thinking when you're saying that, so there's the mind, there's the feelings. And mind then and feelings. also there's like a knowingness that's, that is, um, takes a place when you, when you can connect into that, into that, um, I call it, you know, all, all that is, all that was, all that will be. So that's kind of like what you're saying with the, with the mother, with the amour, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, and here it is when, when people get inspired, right? And can you talk just a little bit louder? It's a little bit. I'm when sorry. people, when people get inspired. Mm-hmm. Right, they have this idea, and the mother is giving them more and more and more. Right, mm -hmm. fill in the blanks, connecting the dots, uh, making a drawing, and right, all that's more. They, she keeps giving them more and more, mm -hmm. and the mother can just keep giving them more forever. Mm -hmm. And then these people start writing books, and that's how you can write 25, 30 books, mm -hmm. is because of the more that's being given to you. Mm -hmm. And but you have to be open to receive it, right? I think at that point. Well, yeah, you can turn it off. Yeah. You know, you can do drugs and uh, sleep on a gutter. Yeah, and, and or get would, busy, or just get busy. Or get busy, yeah. Or whatever, but you you can't you can you can turn it off, but most people don't because, like Joseph Campbell says, follow your bliss. There's a bliss to that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a two-way street. Uh, for f when when you have a question, right? You know what? It, on a spiritual level, the question is the bait. The uh, bait? Did you say bait? Like going fishing. The okay. question is the bait. Okay, right? got it. And you go. I wonder what life is this and wonder what this means and what's the best thing I could be doing? You know, you have these questions, right? Right. Whatever the soul question, what is life all about? And who what am I? These are questions, mean? right? Mm -hmm. But the question, there is no question without the answer. Mm -hmm. And the answer, because it comes from the more, is always bigger than the question. So you go, who am I, right? And then you start learning about yoga, or you start learning about past lives, you start learning about the cosmos, you start learning about the energy, you start learning about electromagnetism, you start, you see what I'm saying? You're getting all this. And, yeah, yeah. and you would not be able to get all that if you didn't have the question. Right. So and the and question is the bait, the connection to the more. Right. And that's the engagement. So you have engagement. So you have engagement, right? So you're seeking, you're seeking more, uh, what is it all about, you know? Or, so are you saying that's a trap? 
No, it's a bait. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's the wrapping on the present. It's like the, you got to make the present because if you just if you're just a normal person, and you don't care about spirituality or anything, and all of a sudden this whole universe pops inside your head and mm -hmm. all these explanations, you go, so what? <laughs> Who cares, right? There's people like that. Right. Yeah, right, right. Some people, that's true. But if you have the question, and it's like a burning question inside of you, like, what's it all about? Or what is the nature of God? Or, or who, you know, any of those kind of uh, more philosophical questions. Mm -hmm. um, the questions are driven by the answer. The answer, per yeah. The answer has to prepare you. Uh, f you have to be prepared for the answer. Mm -hmm. That means you have to have all your channels open. You got to have that connectivity available to you, and then the answer can come to you. And uh, you know that's then this becomes the big gift. Yeah, and then with that would be trust. I would think some trust, in, trust in yourself, trust in the 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 whole game of it in a way it's 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 a little bit like this right you have to have these guys they write a hundred books right <laughs> and what that really is is the mother looking into the crib and saying here's a little toy right right and a child plays with that toy and then throws it away and she goes here's another toy <laughs> and here's another toy right and yeah. then do you ever seen those pictures of kids who've got all these toys all over their bed oh, and yeah. it's called oh, yeah. toys that that's what the mother does. She just keeps giving toys. That's, yeah. that's why I say she's the more. Oh, you like that? I'll give you another one. Oh, you like that? I'll give you hey. another. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you like to think about the universe? Well, I've got, you know, I've got as many universes as you want. Here's this one. Play with that. Here's this one. Play with that. That's why I call it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's why I call her the will. Mm -hmm. It's I will, I wish, I want. And I wonder, I wonder is the question. She's the, the nature of the universe is to question, you know, and all of that is more. All of that is more. Do you question more? If you, she's the inclusivity, right? So she's inclusive of everything. And to be inclusive of everything, you have to want more. You have to be more. You have to want more. And well, and then there comes a time when you're just at peace, right? Or you, okay, I've been there, done that. I've, I've. Well, yeah, but it's not peace. It's not a, not. It's not a turning off of the valve. No. Peace, it... peace, and anxiety are part of the more. Mm -hmm. Light and dark. Everything is in the more. If, and if you have peace, you're having peace, your whole planet has peace, there's a planet right over here that they really want war. That's what they want, man. They're into it. And since their mother goes, oh, you want that toy here? Go ahead, have a war. Yeah. You want to have a war in the whole galaxy? Go ahead, it's okay. Have, have a war in the whole galaxy. That's what you want? Go ahead and go for it. She's more, it's the more. That, that's why they call it, the ancient ones called the mother, right? The, we're talking about the Akash. We're talking about we're talking about the void of space, right? That's what the mother is, the void of space. The and they called her chaos. Yeah. Because you can't pin her down. I want peace and love. And then you get all this peace and love. And then right next to the peace and love is this uh, horror show and, and, uh, and war and hatred. It's chaos, right? And then, but for the mother, like if you have war and hatred, and then you shift over to peace. It's like the peace is defined by war and hatred. Yeah. Imagine if you never had any war, or anxiety, or, or stress, and you're just floating around in space and in bliss. And like, remember what I said about bliss. At some point, it becomes like coffee. You get used to it, and then it doesn't have any effect on you at all. If you swim in the river of bliss. Long well, enough. I, like, I really you don't you that. don't know that you don't know that you're in a river of bliss anymore. <laughs> which know. brings us to the point which 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 is that we have a very, very hard time recognizing how high we are. 
though. Yeah. Because we don't have a reference point. Mm. You know what I mean? Have you ever heard of people who said that they had an experience of knowing everything in the universe? Yeah. Well, there I you go. I've had that experience. <laughs> You've had that experience. Right. Where did it go? It was only for a moment. I could only hold on to it for, a, it was just like a mini second. But where did it go? Mm, I think it's still within me. And where did it come from? Mm, from the same place that we come from. Therefore, it's very hard to tell how high we are. I, I mean, I don't walk around saying I know everything in the universe. Oh, I don't I feel don't, that. I, I, I absolutely, don't feel. I don't feel that. I have no clue. But I know. I don't either. I just had it for a moment. That's all. Just for a like a. Heart yeah, but. And that's it. But 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 but. but. The feeling is the real truth. Well, you can you can go back in it, but. It's not the same. You know. I, and I had no, I had, I had no desire to go back either. It's that's that's something that happens with near death experience a lot. You know, yeah. they go there and they're kind of like sh a little shaky when they get there. And oh, am I going to be judged? Are they going to give me a hard time? And then no. and all of a sudden the, the love comes comes stronger and stronger, yeah. and they get more stronger love. And then along with the love comes this. Uh, I just realized that that moment that I knew everything in the universe. Well, it's because you're fully present, fully a hundred percent present in that moment, and fully connected. And we are now too. With without any. Um, without a brain in there there's you know there yeah well that's that's the thing that's the thing okay uh that you're dead and you're energy right so once you're right. dead you become energy and consciousness and you know and awareness and, and huh? you're very free very, right very free. and then you come into a human body right but you bring that knowingness with you right and, and how much do you know when you bring the knowingness with you? You know a everything. Speck. You, but, huh? but it's still a speck. It's still a speck. It's not a speck. Oh, but it is. It is. It's just. No, a, it's not. We're a speck. No, it's not. But a speck is like a diamond that's, you know, like exploded <coughs> beyond. What I was trying to say about the, the mother of everything. In the ancient writings, they called her chaos, and they blamed her for a lot of shit, because they would get out there and be, they were ascended masters, and they were all, oh, right, and they're, oh, it's all beautiful, and where is the great mother, and all so beautiful, and then they turn around to the, you know, and then uh, oh, the the uh, the Babylonians are fighting the Egyptians, and the, uh, you know, and the, right, all right. that stuff goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that stuff's going on. They're going, how can this happen? And, and it took them a while to figure out that if you absolutely include everything in the universe out of love, for mm -hmm. love, you include everything in the universe, every possibility in the universe, every probability, and every imaginal in the universe, that's chaos. And, and, and could in that, but also in the chaos, see, um, there's creativity. That's the closest I've ever gotten to that space where I had the NDE is when I'm in that flow of creativity, like I'm painting, I'm in the flow, I'm in a zone, I'm in that river, like it's just, uh, um, there is no separation in that moment. So it could be like chaos, but in a way, you know what I mean? Because well, the we think of chaos, there's a beauty in chaos. Well, there, because, yeah, there is because nature, in a way, is chaotic, right? Yes. Trees, yeah. trees drop leaves and branches and everything, and yet, yet you step back away from the, from the woods a little bit, and it's beautiful. So you know, there, and there's 
the, it, the well, trees are growing trees actually grow out of death right dead yes. leaves dead branches dead animals everything's dead on the ground and yet all this life comes out of it so there's there's that you see what i'm saying as soon as you get into polarity and everything is polarity truth is a polarity truth lies right happy sad uh, uh prosperous and and pauper well, right and, and, and out of birth. everything has a polarity so there's a chaos to everything right like when i'm thinking when you're saying that um birth when birth when we come birthed into this world we're in chaos that time that we come out it is in total um this beautiful thing comes out of this amazing um space of of untamable uncontrollable on on all of that which is great like lightning you know or lightning well that's lightning. why i said it's really difficult for us to judge how high we are because we have if you have uh i know everything and i know nothing yeah and right now most of us are in kind of like well i just know what i know which is not much so we're in that nothing said <laughs> right but that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that we're not that that knowing everything is like i'm not i know nothing right here but knowing <laughs> everything is over here so you know we have a hard time seeing our true nature in its fullest fullness fullness and its fullness and its beauty and its uh uh yeah. and its strength its power yeah well, you know, you, we need air to live, right? We need air to live and, and we all breathe the same air. So we're, we're actually breathing the sky, which is an elemental being. But that same air can become cold and it becomes the winter and it becomes hot and becomes the summer and it can uh, blow, right? And, uh, and just blow like hurricanes or tornadoes, you know, that's the air. So there's no real safety Absolutely. you can't say that the air is all good right even though we need it every every second we need it for our life but you can't say it's all good right so anyway that's but but that's the, that's beside the point i think you have to be able to encompass well let me talk about polarity polarity has four parts right there's the yep. there's the light the dark the balance of light and dark, right? So there's good and evil, the balance between good and evil, right? Those are the three. There's good, evil, the balance between good and evil. And then there's netty netty. There's neither this, neither that. In other words, there's more to it. There's more. Mm -hmm. So those are the four parts of polarity. And, um, you know, it's a good to get to that netty netty part because then you're not pulled around by truth or lies or hopes and disappointments or whatever the polarity is, anger or or um, or, or joy, mm -hmm. right? To be pulled by one of these things or to try to balance all these things. Mm -hmm. There's a beyond, there's a more. And that's where most people imagine that's where, um, that's where you don't get triggered anymore. Mm -hmm. right and wrong truth and lies right i'm i know the truth you know right ah i know the truth this is the truth right <laughs> but there's yeah, a lot that everybody's but then they go that's the mainstream media that's a lie right <laughs> truth lie truth lie well don't we need a balance between truth and lies right no there's a beyond truth and lies you have to get that's not true it's not this truth it's not that truth not this lie not that lies but there's a beyond so. So, so so the beyond would be not engaged a no, choice a no. choice no it's it's not not engaged it's not affected it's not affected right Oh, so there's awareness. So awareness would you would have to have an awareness of that. Yeah, like the, the, the truth is a feeling. Mm -hmm. Lies a feeling. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and, and, and a truth can devastate you. Oh, my husband cheated on me. That's the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the lie is he told you he didn't cheat on you. He told you that he loved you. That's the lie, see? Mm -hmm. But 
if you if you're in a place where uh, that doesn't matter yeah there, there's more to this there's more to this rodeo you know <laughs> we got the bull riders coming up next you know there's more to this rodeo than than what this guy this clown is doing over here yeah yeah you see what i'm yeah. saying yeah yeah you're you have a it's what so it would be a perspective could change our perspective right we have choice in changing a perspective yeah if you don't have this is what the thing was about the Garden of Eden, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he, they said, oh, if they get to learn about the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they will be like us, the creator guys, right? Yeah, yeah. If they get, if they get the knowledge of the, of the tree of good and evil, uh, they will be like us. Well, knowledge is the experience, but uh, th that's what it is. If you know, you say I'm a, I'm a human, then you're stuck in that polarity. If you say yeah. I'm an energy being, you know, you're then you're a ghost and you're stuck in that polarity. Yeah. So, but we're we're an energy being that's merged with um, a physical body. So that's the balance between the two. And, and then, that's, and, and that's and then, not forever, right? It's just. That's just this, temporarily. Yes. And, our, and our objective as a spirit, as a ghost in the shell, mm -hmm. our objective is to get to that neutrality point, that beyond, neti neti. It's not this. It's not the physical body. It's not the spiritual body. Uh, it's not some kind of a balance to be made. It's well, beyond. Mm -hmm. It's beyond that. It's, so would it's, it be more, it's more. It goes back to the more, which is yeah. what the more is all about. Right, with well, celebration, right? There's a celebration in it. There really is truly this uh, amazing celebration part of it. Yeah. Yeah, but we're about to go to break in one minute. So I really enjoyed uh, having this chat with you, Michael. It's been really fun. And so I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope our listeners have. I wanna take a moment to shout out to Lynn. Thanks for popping by today, Lynn. And um, also to, um, oh, I saw her here earlier, to Emily. Uh, welcome to the show, Emily. And you can check out uh, Michael's show. We're going to talk about that a little bit on the way back on after the, the um, top of the hour, the pork and beans show. Because we're going to talk, you want to talk about Sasquatch and what you guys Sasquatch. are Sasquatch. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back at 6.04. Don't go anywhere. And we're live on air. Thank you, Michael. I'm going to go out.
Welcome back Oops, to the Cosmic Oracle Show. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay. And we, we, we have with us this evening, we have Michael Harrell. We've been having a, a really good time talking about uh, the philosophy of, of life or uh, the meaning of life, the, the living of life. The, you started off with the magic because this is the magic of life. <laughs> The magic of life, right? Our magical right. lives that we have here, that we have a, we have an ability to have such a magical life, right? That we can look back before we put down the skin body and say, hey, that was a really wild ride, you know? And maybe I did some, um, uh, some good things while I was there and maybe helped change some things along, who knows? What, what would you look, Michael, if you look back at your life, let's say, what, what would you say if you're like, you put your skin body down, right? And you're just a, you're free, Michael, as a soul of consciousness. And what do you think you would be saying looking back on your life so far? I'd say I did good. Isn't that fun to be able to say that? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say, um, I'd say. I did just about as best as a human can do. I mean, there's always, again, there's always more, and you can't really judge. But in terms of uh, of what I, I needed to get accomplished, mm -hmm. you know, I, I did what I what I wanted to do. I learned how to edit my akash. I, I learned how to edit uh, karma. What I, I needed to get accomplished. Oh, hello. You know, Wait, we have a double going I, on. I here. did what I what I wanted to do. I learned how to edit my Akash. I, I learned how to edit uh, karma. What I, I needed to get. So, so. That's God know. talking, by the way. I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> my God self started talking. <laughs> Who's that? So wise. <laughs> All right. So that's you in two dimensions right now, right? Or maybe a few more. Who knows? Yeah. But, but to be able to say that, I, I don't know if, if, can most people say that, you know? that people... I know. Well, you know, I did a lot of meditation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I did years of meditation and Kriya Yoga. I met these enlightened men, right? And th those guys were amazing. But there was this one meditation I did. And uh, it was, if you imagine flying over a desert, right? Yeah. Uh, and there's a train track going through the desert. And, um, but this train went from horizon to horizon. Mm. And what they were loading up into the boxcars was my fulfillment. Oh. My fulfillment stretched as far as the eye can see in both directions. That's pretty wonderful. Yeah. I love that. So I mean, for, but for fulfillment is is a is a feeling inside. Mm -hmm. To be fulfilled is a feeling inside. The lack of want or need, you know, the no stress, you know. Right. Um, to be fulfilled, yeah. Oh yeah. But um, we're gonna hopefully get to Sasquatch soon. I like Sasquatch. 
Yeah, they're, 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 well, you know, they talk about earth magic. Those guys, those guys got it dialed in. You know, they can Don't come they? and go. They can walk through walls. They can lift your heart up. They can put fear of God into you. I mean, those guys have got it going on. They're playful. They're loving. So they, those guys got it going on. They do. And they're in a unity consciousness. Yeah. They they stay the way they are because they want to be connected to Mother Earth, mm -hmm. which is connected to the mother of everything. And they and they and they they connect in what we what we would call like a hive mind, but they have a unity mind and an individual spirit, right? Yeah, so they could tell both. It's kind of like what humans have, but in a we have a much lesser degree of that. I think we just have less energy pressure. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you mean by that energy pressure? Aside, you know, enlightened people like they have and Kundalini people. Mm -hmm. Like I remember this, there was a, this one lady who she, she got a spontaneous Kundalini, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, and her energy was so high that she would just like hold people. Right? She'd give them a hug. I, I saw the video for this lady giving them a hug, and then the, the, the people would just, her energy was so high when she connected to somebody by giving them hugs, they would just pass out and bliss, bliss intoxication, oh, yeah. and gone, 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 because her energy is so high. And when you when you meet an enlightened man, like a guru or something, like a, a guru, when they go to Darshan, right? Yeah. You know what Darshan is? Oh, yeah, I used to hang out with your, your uh, dudes. Your, um, yeah, so did you ever see, did you ever watch what was going on in a Darshan line? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what did they have? They had people there would grab you and pull you off of his feet, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next next tent down, or the next room down, they had, a, they had people who would, some people would just pass out. Yep. They would pick them up and carry them and let them like, you know, rebalance and everything. Yeah. That's what it, you know what I mean? That's that's what I mean by high pressure. Yeah. All right. Have a lot of spiritual power, a lot of spiritual pressure. That's good. You feel like you have that? Michael? I have had it. I mean, I remember when I was, but before I started doing my healing uh, and evolving kind of business, uh, I remember we had a, like a, like a little mini workshop or a little talk at my house once and and uh, everybody was sitting on the floor, and I was walking around talking, blah, blah, blah. And then this one guy, um, this one guy pulled me over to the side at the sort of like, you know, intermission or whenever we were just uh, quiet. He said, you know, Mike, every time you walk past me, my whole head fills up with this blue light. Ooh. And I'm, it was true. At that time, I was holding a lot of spirit spiritual pressure. I just was holding down a lot of energy. The thing about meditation is it's sort of like, um, you know, the way you put energy into your phone is with a thing, a little plug, you put, you plug it in, and then it takes like hours to, you know, but with meditation, it takes hours to fill up your body with that kind of energy. So that's why you do it really well. Well, we were talking about polarity before we left. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to that. Yeah. So, one polarity is to be in your head all the time. Another polarity to be is being is to be in your feelings all the time. So that's the man and the woman, mm -hmm. and if they can get to balance, they balance in the heart. Mm -hmm. And um, whatever we have inside of us collectively. We see outside of us. Whatever is inside of us, we see outside of us. And what we see outside of us is heartlessness. All these people who are running the corporations, running the governments, running the army, running the drug companies are all in their head. And they squeeze their emotional body to only one thing, greed and must win, greed. And that's the only thing that matters. That's the only thing that... Is we gotta win, we gotta right, and 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 whatever it takes, and, and whatever it takes, you know, and which means completely don't pay any attention to your heart and only use your feelings for a battery, you know. You can and only use your feelings. Justify doing it. 
and yeah. and because we're doing what we want right and then you then you convince yourself right you said it in your mind that we are gods among men and i have the right to rule and the mother of everything says oh that's a toy you want that toy i'll give you that toy here right and then they, then they feel justified by everything they do satanists and uh, baby eaters and whatever it is they do and uh it's just bizarre because it's got nothing to do it's got nothing to do with money it's in power these people are empty inside yeah. you know what i mean yeah. they're they're void of so that's, we we're talking about creativity, right? Yeah, I love creativity. That's when I feel the closest <clears throat> to, to the magic. <laughs> and we're talking about art yes. and writing books, right? Yes, and dance so you can, and music. And, and music yes. and dance, right? Yes, yeah. And the art of cooking and art of making yes. love. Yes, yes, and poetry. Okay. And, and gardening. And gardening. Yeah. Yeah. The living arts. And sailing. I think sailing the ocean. <laughs> so when you paint a picture, right? Let's say you paint a picture. Yes. Where does it go? It goes in somebody's house on a wall. Mm -hmm. Right? So an artist, an artist, right? They paint paintings and it goes in somebody's house. Maybe it goes in a castle or big, some big house, right? Mm -hmm. And when you when you write music, then people hear that music in their house, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And on all these things, you cook in the house, and you have a garden in the front of your house, and mm -hmm. and the architects there's this, and there's huh? Beauty. And there's beauty. Yeah, and yeah, it's all great stuff. And then and then there's uh, people who are interior designers, architects, and interior designers. And they consider their art the highest art. And why is that? Because you live in their art. A good interior decoration, a good interior designer, and a good architect, they're building a living art space. So you go and you live inside their art. Right. I was an interior designer, Michael, for a while. There you go. A long and that's, con that's considered by some as the, you know, and then you pick the painting to go on the wall right, right. And you pick all the music it. and you pick the way the kitchen should be and right. yeah all that right yeah. so that you can you can live in that house right mm -hmm. <clears throat> but in some ways i feel like i'm the i am the i have the highest art mm -hmm. because we're living in these bodies right yep and if you if you can become if you can become the interior decorator of your own body, of your own being, of your thoughts and feelings, mm -hmm. then, you know, it doesn't matter what's going on on the outside. You're living in a, a beautiful place. Right, right. You're the, the driver of your own bus. <laughs> You're the driver of your own bus. Yeah. <laughs> That's not such an eloquent way to put it. But... And the sad thing is that there's so, so much of our inner world is uh, alien. Mm. In other words, we're giving uh, given our language, we're giving uh, given our culture, we're given our sense of beauty, we're given our sense of music, we're given we're given all these things influenced from the outside in, and also our identity and our flow of life and what's important and what's not important. We're giving these things. This is what what mind control is, right? Yeah. Mind control never is mind control. It's will control, right? It's feeling control. If you can control the mind, the mind controls the feelings. And then it's the feelings that manifest reality. So that's why propaganda, we're in a propaganda war now. We're in an informational war now. We're in, you know, everybody's trying to get the truther movement, right? To oppose the lie movement. Yeah. Yeah because they want to get it into your head, their reality, so that you are manifesting their reality for them. This is magic, going back to the magic. Mm -hmm. If you can get people to work for your company, to buy your products, to believe that you're, to believe in your wars, mm -hmm. 
we just like we're like in trance oh war in the middle east oh, oh okay you know what i mean and then we pay for it and we've been you know that's millions of people dead because of that yeah that's a result of having a very shabby house a very dirty filthy uh uncleaned untaken care of or unacknowledged house and that's the way the propaganda of what life is but the uh well, what that's I... what it that's what it re results in so you have really high drug drug usage pharmaceutical drugs 66 percent of people are on dr pharmaceutical drugs i remember you saying that last time yeah me away just drugs for anxiety drugs for uh stress drugs for depression drugs for uh, adhd drugs for ptsd drugs for you name it the whole there's a whole list they they keep adding new things for complexes they then they call it a complex as soon as they call it a complex it goes into your mind and as soon as it goes into your mind like associate disassociate associate i got associate's degree in a disassociate behavior right I, that, oh, I got an associate degree in disassociation, so I, I you know, I got to take these pills. Well, and right? you get a label, and you think that's you. You get a label, and you feel like that's you. Yeah. And if you can feel then like you that's you, know. that manifests into your reality yeah. as you. Yep. So Unless it's all you're about... aware of it, then you then you can you don't have to do that. Yeah, so you have all these be all these people uh, really wanting to walk all over your inner world, your inner house, right? And you can't keep your you can't keep your house clean and beautiful and pristine if you just have, you know, a whole zoo of things walking in and out of your house all the time. You have right. to be you have to be gated. You have to be guarded. You have to be able to lock the door and and well, open it only by your own. You know, I'll let this in, but not that, right? You And you can create sacred space. And creating sacred space is a, is a form of protection mm -hmm. and a form of saying, I only want what's the in the best and highest good for me or for my family or for whatever, right? That's what sacred space is, right? Or for the world. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going on. That's why emotional healing work editing your cash editing the the trauma and drama and garbage out of your karma right out of right. your body out of your mind out of your spirit out of your out of you stuff. name it out get yeah. out right get i don't need that out. junk right. anymore because i want to be able to and then all that stuff that happens it's unbelievable all this stuff that happens in a program is, is brings about heartlessness, right? Is heartlessness in the world and lack of self love. You need to be calm enough, calm, cool, connected, and collected enough that our thoughts can love our heart and our will. When our thoughts love our heart and our will, then, then the, then the, your mind becomes the husband to the feeling. Mm -hmm. The mind becomes the husband, the loving husband to the feeling, and the mind. Uh, nurtures and embraces and comforts the feeling so that the feelings can begin to thrive and that feeling of thrive and connectedness and and uh, being held and comforted and this is all the things that women look for right I want a man who will look this and then and, and love me and and take care of me and and, uh, and embrace me and right all that stuff that women are looking for in a man is what your emotional body is looking for you out of your own mind and and, and so the first man the, f the primary relationship is is to make your mind into the man that you want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and this this is where the more comes in right i mean the the beyond you have to go beyond you have to go beyond thoughts and feelings and you have to sit there and say well i'm riding this rodeo bull and uh you know and and i don't know if i even want to rot play this game anymore this bull's bucking really hard you know and and what can i do to to uh to make it better and one thing you can do is stop riding the bull and take the bull and take it out and put it out in the pasture and let it just like be natural again you know yeah. so anyway 
the highest magic that there is, the highest magic is, that there is, is to reduce the clutter of toxic thoughts that create toxic feelings that gives you an adverse, uh, an adverse life, right? A yeah. life not worth living. Yeah. You know, because like, look, it's not sixty-six percent. That means thirty-three percent of the people are doing okay. But it's not really okay because 60 to 66% of the government are, are whack jobs and narcissists and, and psychopaths, 66% of the police, 66% of the, you know, uh, of the local politicians. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is a, this is not a reality worth living in. Yeah. Because but, we don't, but be, if, yeah. But if you can clean up your inside like you're talking about and have that, glow from the inside that that and it and it's a, what you're talking about is loving yourself right loving yourself and that's what's that's that's the slap in the face that's the simple We're, part though that's the key to it all it's right? not it's not it's the hardest thing reason being is like we have covid right yeah and we, oh covid covid right and then that just got us that got our mind got alarmed and believed in COVID for the first few uh, hours, few months, a few weeks, maybe. And then it went down to the feeling. And then once the COVID hit from the mind and the feeling, when they lined up with this kind of panic and terror, then the whole world went into a shock and a lockdown, right? Yeah. yeah. And that, there you go. That's And then where was the self-love? Only a very few handful of people were going, wait a minute, this is not real. This is not truth. This is, there's mm -hmm. something off about it, right? Mm -hmm. And it took a long time. It took like two years for the, the truth movement, which was like, this is BS, to, <laughs> co to come around and, and, and to be proven on every single thing that they said. This was, actually was manufactured, actually was uh, planned out, actually was a conspiracy, actually was. You see, you had to prove all this stuff. And, uh, and, you know, so it costs right now, it's around a million people kind of suffered because of that. And you know what they're doing in schools now? They won't, if, you, if you've had the, um, the uh, experimental uh, inoculation, they won't let you play sports. Oh, my gosh. Uh. Yeah, well... And you know what the insurance are doing now? If you have an insurance or have life insurance, you have life insurance. Say you got a, you know, you're like a millionaire or something and you have $10 million life insurance, right? If you die and you had the, and you had the, you know, the juice, they'll say, we don't have to pay your life insurance. What? Because you volunteered to take an experimental product oh and because of that. I never heard that. I never oh, that's heard true. That. The, wow. the life insurance companies will not pay out. How wild that's is that? Wild. Oh, that none of that stuff is self love. Okay. Yeah, I got to find out. I have some friends in life insurance. I'm going to call them and ask them. Wow. Call them and ask them. Yeah, I will. I'm not that sure is, if it's, yeah. I'm not sure if it's that way, but I mean, here, look at the life insurance company. They're looking at like a million people sure dying too early and then they're looking at maybe another 10 million people dying uh in the next five or ten years and that means they got to pay out all that insurance they're not going to do that they're going to they're going to make sure they're not going to do that yeah anyway enough of enough of that the best thing you can do is to get your your thoughts and your feelings in order because that's where the magic is. If yeah. you want to manifest a reality, if you want to manifest the truth, you feel it. You feel it to heal it on the emotional level, and you feel it to manifest it, right? Yeah. You know, you, and, you and have, what, tell, tell our people, tell our viewers where they can find your work. We haven't even mentioned that yet. I think it's important. Oh. Yeah, I have a, I have this healing modality. It's called Language Lessons of the Heart, it's and it's probably the best healing modality on the planet. If you need it, <clears throat> if you don't need it, then everybody needs it. Are you kidding? 
<laughs> well, no, what I, what I mean by need it, you got to feel it to need it. And yeah. A lot of people are really busy covering up their feelings, so uh, they don't know okay. that they need it. They just, yeah. you know, I you're gonna, gonna, you almost have to have the, a dark night of the soul in order to make the changes because what you feel is your regular life is just your, you know, you got adjusted to um, low level anxiety, stress, trauma, drama, and depression. And you call that life. That's just the way I am. And you, adjust, you try to adjust to that. Right. In reality, that's not who you are at all. There's, there's, that's just all these footprints, dirty footprints of the past that are still walking all over you. Yeah, so there's Language Lessons of the Heart. I have a, I have a group on Facebook called Wonderful. Language Lessons of the Heart. Okay. And I have a like page called um, Michael Harrell. And it's just for inspiration. Good. And uh, I don't know, I, I think in the past, since I think 2017, I've got about seven or eight thousand people who've done my course the, the, who kind of, I, the, I started the, taking it i and it's it's amazing it's really amazing and it's um i want to find it for people i'm going to try and put up a um a link for you in the in the chat well, there's no link you just look just type in type in language lessons of the heart okay. uh, on facebook and it'll come up under groups okay um, and then I have like a YouTube channel where I keep all my uh, everything I do is in video format. So I have it's like ten videos. It covers four processes. And yeah, and it's really it's really good. I think it's worth uh, it's worth checking out if you need it. You know. I, I think everybody needs it. I really do. Yeah. yeah. I really truly do. It oh, let, 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 let me put it in perspective for you, right? We're okay. talking about enlightenment, right? I when I got sort of, sort of really close to enlightenment and I was like carrying around all this light inside of me, that's when I had my dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. And then I had to go and heal my emotional body and that's how I got to to be cut to, to learn about how how the consciousness works and thoughts and feelings and pain and past and all that kind of stuff. I got to see how that worked because I was had a really still mind. So enlightenment does not cover your emotional dramas and traumas and does not change your karma enlightenment right yeah then then there's people who've had near-death experience and these people went up to say saw god they were up there they had they felt like they knew everything and they come back a totally changed person but if they had trauma from the from their childhood it, a near-death experience is, it gives you a new lease on life but it does not heal your 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 childhood traumas your dramas right it doesn't it's then then I've, I've talked to people, I've, I've investigated people who've had uh, Kundalini awakening, full-blown Kundalini awakening. And they get full-blown Kundalini awakening and they say, well, you know, here I am like this expanded uh, superhuman consciousness and my pain from the past are like, from the past are like bullets that are lodged in my body. And you have to go in there and dig them out. So... Enlightenment doesn't do it. Near-death experience doesn't do it. Kundalini rising doesn't do it. You know, there, there's, there's, you have to do this, right? You have to clear out your own karma. It's yeah. just like God does not clean your house for you. You yeah. have to clean your house for you. God does not put gas in your car or clean the garbage out of the, your car. You got to do it yourself, right? It's because it's yours. Well, once once somebody makes if if you had a party in your house and everybody uh, made a big mess in your house and then they they all leave right well you you still have to live there so you have to clean that. all that stuff up god doesn't do it uh enlightenment doesn't do it if you're enlightened you still got to clean your house you see what i'm saying so you can't buy the stairway to heaven you can't buy the stairway to heaven yeah the stairway's already there you just got to move all the garbage off the steps <laughs> Exactly. And your work does that. Language lessons of that. Right. It so I have, I have judgment and denial release. That's for the thoughts in your head. Mm -hmm. Judgment and denial release because, we're, like I said, when you if you think I'm not good enough, then that goes down through, past your heart, hits your emotional body, and your emotional body will make you have that feeling of not being good enough. And it is what is, is what you feel that manifests. So you're going to manifest okay. out into the world 
that you're not, not, a, not good enough in the my eyes of my boss, not good enough in the eyes of the God, and not good right. enough in the eyes of my wife, and not good enough right. in the eyes of my kids. You see, that's one. There's yeah. hundreds and hundreds of judgments like that that we pick up along the way. Yeah. We, we make the conclusion from, and then our will, our, our will and heart manifest that reality because they have no choice. Yeah. Because you carry that wound with you, that's what man. That's what shadow work is happen. It's all about you. Yeah. You pain from the past shadows over into your future reality, and you're looking like it's fate. Why did bad things happen to me? I am yeah. such a good person. Why is all this? Everything I do turn to shit. These are uh, these are tells of a traumatic past that yeah. made you form stinking thinking, and the stinking, stinking thinking, thinking gave you rotten feelings. Yeah. And the rotten feelings and stinking thinking gave you a rotten life. Yeah, yeah. You know, my husband left me. To to... What? You have the power to change all of that through your work. And it's yeah. not easy, though. It's not, you have to go. So do you have to go, like, I just did this whole thing where um, I found one of the places that I was stuck was from way back. You know, it's like onions, layers of, of it. And it was where I found that I was a burden. That oh, I yeah, and it's because yeah, I if your really... parents made you feel like a burden, oh, I yes. wish you were. I wish you wouldn't. But you're so beautiful. But I wish you wouldn't born. Wouldn't be born because I would have been off, you know, in in, in right, Hollywood. Exactly, exactly. And so I had asthma, and so they, I was a burden to the family. Not only was a burden, but I was a burden emotionally, financially. So I had to go into that and clear all of that and clean all of that. None of that stuff was true. That was none of it was true. But I took it as true. You know, the thing, the thing about one this little thing, right? One thing and can mess up your whole life and make yes. you sick. Yes, exactly, exactly. Because uh, what, what is that COPD or whatever it is that where you have your light breathing disease? That's from asthma, yeah. uh, uh, allergies, COPD. Yeah. That's all has to do with this. Huh, huh, huh. Right. And that's the feeling of. Huh. There's something wrong with me. Huh. There's something right. wrong with me, right? Right, right, exactly. <clears throat> and then you have a lifelong disease. Yeah, it's and mind so, blowing. It is, and that's just one little thing. So yeah. it's kind of like it's like I like what you're saying, where it's a it's about cleaning house. It really is cleaning cleaning your house, so you get to really shine and have that life that's where we we are so amazing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And we get to be happy and and love and celebrate. I we're meant to have that. If you if you don't like the way your life is going, things are not good, right? Relationship problems, financial problems, stress problems, all these kind of problems. That's karma. That is your karma. You are living with your karma. Mm -hmm. And karma is the content of your consciousness. When you clean out and re-edit the content of your consciousness, it changes your karma. Mm -hmm. And you can change your karma from the back to the future from the past to the future and like you said like you're saying your mother and your father and your family treated you like you were a burden right when you heal that inside of you you're going to heal it inside of them because of because of because uh, uh, of the because it's connected right right there's there's that uh, entanglement you have an entanglement with that trauma when you heal that trauma, the entanglement is gone. And guess what that does? It heals your mother and father and all that kind of stuff. Even if they're dead, it heals right. them because you because consciousness, because karma is a cache, and the cache is what's written in your life. When you change what's written in your life, you can change your generational trauma, yeah. which is really kind of cool stuff. It is. I like that word generational karma, right? Yeah, and generational that, trauma. Yeah, yeah. We are one half of our mother and one half of our father mm -hmm. genetically. Mm -hmm. But we are one half of our father and one half of our mother energetically. Our oh biofield is created out of the essence of their biofield. They right. shaped us, right? Right, right. Even if the father was absent from birth or something, it's still... It has DNA, right? It's his energy, his energy signature. That's so if he's crazy or if he's a drunkard or if he's flander or whatever, or he beats your mother or whatever, that energy is there, it's imprinted. 
that energy doesn't go away. It can only be edited. And that's what you do in your work. And deleted, right. That's what I do in my work. Oh, I don't think I did that part. I was just doing some... I have to go back in and finish it then. I don't think yeah, I... well, you're, if you did the, the Judgment and Denial release, the next thing you can do, if you wish to... I will. Wait, is to kill I... your mother. Kill your mother, kill your mother, kill her dad, kill her dad. No. <laughs> Really, what you're doing is there's a cartoon of her. Okay. There's a, there's a little cartoon movie of her rolling her eyebrows or making a heavy sigh and make, letting you know that you're, you're a burden. I love you, but you're a burden, right? There's that, there's that movie. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you go someplace where you can scream a little bit and you start screaming at her. Okay. What's the matter with you? you? You're so crazy. You're like, you, you know, I, nobody should do that to any kid. You had no right to say that to me to feel like that. You know, you hadn't done your work, so now I got to do your work for you. And you yell and yell and yell. Okay. What you want to do is take the cartoon of your mother, mm -hmm. right? And, and just like obliterate her. And, okay. and if it's really bad, right? If it's really bad, mm -hmm. you take out a, a stick and you beat her to death, right? Okay. And, and if you're really angry, you kill her mother and her father's and mother and her father and mother. You go on back like that. Or you kill every woman or every man who's ever made anybody feel who's ever made anybody feel like they were not worth living or they weren't good enough, right? You kill okay. them, right? Okay. Now, that's no, good. That. Part two. Okay, wait, let me, I got that down. So that's part one. Let me write it down. Because I'm going to do that in my car while I'm driving. Yeah, in your car. That's good. This is, yeah. this okay, is murder. Perfect. This is going full collie. Part okay, two. Full collie. Let's do full it. Full collie, right? And okay. I'm gonna kill you, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah, you're killing the cartoon, and the cartoon is the one that was been bothering you this whole time. Right. Your mom's right. not in the room with you now, but what's yeah. in the room with you now is the cartoon of her. Right. Right. And that's what's that's what PTSD is. That's what's what trauma is. That's what wounding is. Is a cartoon. Is a, a really well done cartoon mm -hmm. of the memory of the time when it all clicked. I'm a burden. Right. I'm not wanted. I'm and not I, worthy. And I had it all this time and I didn't know it. It took me a while to get to that, right? Yeah. And that, that was a major one for me and I was surprised to even see it, right? It's a major one. It's, it's like a core one that was a core one for me. So it was, I was so excited. And if, you, the, and if, the, next, and if the next conclusion is, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a burden, <clears throat> If the next conclusion is I I don't deserve love. Mm. Okay. So what do you do with that one? Same thing. So, so but but the the devastation it does to your life is incredible. You have some guy when you go to pick a guy, you're going to go pick a guy who's going to dump you. Right. Like, you know, or, or you're going to sabotage the relationship because you don't deserve love. You understand I've what I'm only saying? been married three times, okay? So. <laughs> well, you, you see what I'm saying? It's like. Yeah, I know. This yeah. is for our listeners, too. Right, or, or the love that I, the love that I get, the love that I get, I don't deserve, so you bail yeah. out or whatever. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. this, these things are like so toxic and they are, they are what they call karma, you know. And you don't need that stuff because it's just energy in motion and it can be edited. Okay, so the part two is okay. after you've killed the grand, your, your mother, your father, their grandparents and great grandparents and on back, kill all the people who have ever made, ever made anybody feel uh, that they weren't worth living or they were in the way or they didn't deserve love, right? You kill all those people in your imagination. Okay. This is imaginary okay. thing, right? Yeah. Which is your mind <laughs> saying, which is it. your mind saying to your feelings, yeah. "We're going to kill this, so you don't have to feel it anymore." Right. We're right. going to kill it because you don't want to have to feel it anymore. Okay. Okay. Now, the, then the next thing you do is you is you zoom back away from the earth, okay. and you blow that earth to bits. You okay. blow it to bed, to bed. You just okay. blow it like a like it's a death star. You just blow um, it into, into dust, right? Okay. Because you don't want a world. You don't want the world that was created by that judgment. I love that. Okay. So you don't want that world because that in your emotional body, it's like, well, it wasn't just your mother and father. That was the whole world that was that was built from you know, that. Right. And then the, the last step is okay. you kill you kill the demon lord you kill the 
the uh, lower lord, the god that created that world, that oh, would that have it, cool. right? Yeah. So, because, you know, this is, it all gets back to God. God doesn't love me. I'm not good enough in the eyes of God. Uh, God, oh God, why have you punished me? And this is my punishment. All that stuff. You want to kill that God okay. that created the world where women and men could make their children feel like they're in the way and they're a burden. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then and thus crush your feelings. So mm -hmm. there you go from your family to the world to God. And when you okay. wipe that stuff out with a, you know, okay. going full collie, yeah, um, it's gone. Then your then your emotional body doesn't can't put together the the video anymore. I love it. You Did know, you replace it with anything, or you just let it go. <clears throat> well, that has four. It has four steps to it. One okay. is to feel the fear, right? You have to feel the fear of your mother. You have to feel the fear of, of. I'm a burden. I'm a burden of everybody. I got to be nice to everybody because I'm a burden to everybody. I'm, I, I, you know, you got to feel that anxiety, that fear. Mm -hmm. Then you move over to you had no right to do this to me. You just because you're unconscious and uncaring and heartless. You know, you chose to have me, and here you are judging me after right. you had me. You're the one who had the sex and had you know, invited me and all this kind. And you just give them shit, right? right? And then that turns into it goes from anger into rage into blind rage, into murderous rage, and you kill them all, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to full Kali. She's just okay. completely uh, whatever. Lost it. But Kali, <laughs> Kali has blood, right? Yeah. She cuts off the head of the demon, right? That's yes, killing the yes. demon god. She cuts off the okay. head of the demon, and she catches the blood, okay. right? And then she drinks that blood. The blood is the blood of the innocent. So... First, okay, I'm all good up until that point for some no, reason. Wait, 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 listen, listen. <laughs> she takes the blood of the innocent back into her. The, what the demon attacked was the blood of the innocent. Mm -hmm. So she drains the blood of the innocent out of the demon, catches mm -hmm. it in a bowl, and she drinks it. And what this is, so there's fear, right? You got to move the fear. And then you move your rage, and then you kill, kill everything, right? Right. Then you drop down to the level of the child. You just finished this galactic war, right? And then you embrace the child. You love your, you love that little you. You, uh, you mama her. You mm -hmm. comfort her, and you say, "I'm here now. Nothing's gonna happen to you," mm -hmm. right? That is the drinking of the blood. That is that is taking the blood, of, see, taking I her see. pain and stuff back into you. Taking what was tortured her back into you as an adult. You know, you can cry, you can, it's okay, but I'm here for you. You mama the trauma. This is the inner child work. You bring that inner child back from the dead, back from the lost land, back from the 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 tunnel of death, right? Right, right. So that's that. Okay, and then the last part is to champion your success. Yay. When you champion your success, that puts the icing on the cake. I won victory because the whole time, You've been a victim of what? Of 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 the right of, of the judgment of that judgment of the the whole yeah. show of it because right. behind that it's a whole bunch of other little stuff. So too. you're not a victim anymore. You're a victor. You just yeah, killed the pair. Like you killed the parents, and this is how you do generational generational trauma. That's how you do it. Yeah, that'll be great. I can't. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Yeah. Or maybe tonight. Either tonight or tomorrow, I'll let you know. Oh, and all yeah, of our right. listeners out there, you can try this at home too, right? And yeah, it's called. That's this is called the uh, emotional release. It's uh, uh, it's called finding your lion heart. This whole exercise is called finding lion heart. You can do it four times. I have it. It's like a little bit like the. It's, it is exactly like the hero's journey. Oh right? yeah, yeah. So you yeah, know, it's you, like that. Oh, there's. Uh, I'm wounded. This and I gotta find. This is right. And then you, you do the whole hero's journey in like 15 minutes. Right. So you're, you're then I do it, you're like, it's like a little movie scene, like rehearsing yeah. for a movie. Yeah, I like it. And so once that's all back and you champion it, then you are your um, you have all your potential back, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you do it, it doesn't take too long. Like I said, if if you uh, let's say you have like you're not, I don't see you as like a really seriously uh, traumatized person, but some people really are. I mean, they were beaten I've and tortured. I've worked on it a lot. I've worked on a lot. Yeah, you worked on it a lot, so you have a lot of momentum towards the healing. Yeah. 
but let's say just you're just an average person. If you did this once a week, right, on a weekend, because you need recovery time, because we're right. moving furniture. We're like cleaning house. You got to pick up the couch and sweep it all out. Oh, you're moving furniture around inside. Exactly. You're changing your desk. You're changing your destiny, right? Exactly. So that's exactly. heavy duty work. So you only do it like so you can do it for like let's say an hour on a weekend, right? And then. So if you did that for one hour in three months, there's not going to be much left. You'll know that there's when there's nothing left because there's no feel, you, there's no there's no trauma, there's no right. poke in the back, there's no guilt, there's no shame, there's no blame, there's no limitations, there's no can't, there's no you saying all that stuff that that uh, we've been living with thinking it's uh, thinking it's us, it's not us at all. Yeah, I and it, and I thought I was surprised to find it. Isn't that funny? It was there the whole time, and I was. Well, that's what that that's what the empowerment's for, mm -hmm. and that's what the um, when when you learn that process, you learn the uh, judgment and denial release process. Right. You learn right. it, right? Well, here again, it's the idea presented to your emotional body, and when the emotional body gets it, yeah. then she will offer up. Here's this one. Here's this. Then, then you've got healing. Instead of being wounded automatically, mm -hmm. you begin the process of healing automatically. Right, right. And that's what this it. is. It's, it's an example of being healing automatically, where the stuff comes up in a nice way that you can you can see it, you can deal with yeah. it, you can work with it. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it takes courage too. For all of our listeners out there, it takes courage because you know because you could just it becomes you you. Let's see, how do you say it? Um, your quality of life, you just, you get so comfortable being in pain and suffering that you think that's the way life should be, and it's not. Yeah, that's true, it's not. And also, this thing doesn't make you into a Superman. No. What it does is, is it, if you have a flat tire and you change the flat tire, the car works perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and maybe at one point your car worked perfect and then it got a flat tire. Yeah. And then you change the flat tire and then it works perfect again. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's like that. Right. Only, right. only this flat tire is that emotional stuff, the the need yeah. for the need for addictions, the need for you know, for positioning, the need to be to be fake, the need to like cover up your feelings and the need all that stuff just kind of goes away. And there you are in this beautiful body just driving along it's like well, this is normal you know what i mean but for people who are who've got trauma and dramas which is a lot of people a lot of people normal is pretty damn good yeah normal yeah. is good yeah now, and then you can do your spiritual work and your your manifesting work and your ascension work and your mm -hmm. and your little bowl thing and your 430 harmonics and you know all you all that stuff have fun with it yeah, yeah. You know, but those things aren't going to heal your emotional body right. but you can have fun with that stuff you know once you get all balanced out yeah i and you know i was saying because i'm going to be 70 this year and i'm thinking you know i thought i had done all of it and when it just came up i was really thankful that it came up that i got to to be aware of it so i can I can destroy it like you're saying and it's awesome. Thankful. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know when when I was sort of like at the tail end of my uh, of my uh, it was like a year after I did the bulk of my healing and I had this kind of this emergent thing back in I kind of balanced everything out and I could feel it, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of that year I, I I I understood that I don't want anything denied in my life. I don't want any pain, any nothing that causes me anxiety, stress, nothing. I don't want it. So I would pray. My prayer was this, and I hope your listeners catch this. Mm -hmm. Please, God, give me all the pain that is mine. Give me every pain, all possible pain, any pain that you can find. Whatever is painful or stressful, let me have it. Yeah. Please let me have it. I would beg for that. And, and I would pray this day after day for two years wow. Wow. okay and what happened there was no pain to come back to I was done and you know you're done yeah you know what yeah. I'm saying yeah you pray for pain for two years and nothing happens there's no pain left yeah yeah 
What that's you're it. shooting for is this. The end game. You want to know the end game? Yeah, let's let's hear it. This is coming from my will. Mm. Remember, you got, I told you how to talk to your will. Mm -hmm. I said one to her one day. What is the experience of doing language lessons of the heart? And without a heartbeat, with just in a heartbeat, she said, "It's the end of pain, and the return of life, loving life." Ooh, I like that. The I end like of pain and the return of life, loving life. Because oh, if you're in like a lot that. of pain, you're not That's living your life. Awesome. That is awesome. awesome. That's I the end that game. For all of our listeners here, all anyone who comes to this um, interview, that they that I wish that for them. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I wish that. I'm for thinking. Them. I'm trying to gear up to. Uh, you know that you really inspired me so much. Um, when we did that little mini workshop. Yes. Uh, thing. Yeah. That was like that was so much fun. It was. it was such a good energy about it. It was. It was. So I thought, listen, uh, I could get Zoom, uh, professional Zoom, and why don't I just start doing a a, a workshop, a, a series of workshops, right? So I would yes. do uh, one one a week for a month, and that mm -hmm. would give me the four processes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I, I'm, I'm trying to I'm going to try to set up and do that, you know, so that, so that it's it'll may be a free kind of a thing. Okay. But I think when I think when it's in like this kind of like a little container. Oh, it, yeah, it's a perfect time of year to do it because it's spring cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> That's really That's, what it is, you know. It is. It's like cleaning. So, you know, I love it, Michael. However, I can support you with that. And, you know, later on as as a terror gross, we really would be honored to have you as one of our teachers to teach there as well. So that's our big future plan there. The, so. big, the big future plans. Yeah. Well, that starts, goes back to the magic, you know. If the mind, if you can hold it in your mind and feel it in your being mm -hmm. as true, as new, as what it is, mm -hmm. then it's going to happen. I think it is. Well, that's it the is. magic. Yeah, I think so. And what, what about the Sasquatch people? The Sasquatch people are just amazing because they like to teach without words. So they teach exclusively with feeling. Yes. yes. And if you, if you can tune into what they're feeling, the feeling that the wisdom of the feeling that they're giving you, they are some of the best teachers in the world. They, they are. They really, truly are. Yeah, I, I. I want to. I have to have you back on so we can talk about all of those experiences, too, with everybody, you know. So, yeah, woo! It's been a good show. We only have a couple minutes left. Yeah, you know, Sasquatch. The Sasquatch people are like the yogis. Mm -hmm. You know, they have these yogis, yogis and sadhus. These guys who walk around, there's like four or five different camps of them, and there's basically millions of people. These guys who walk around naked, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they smoke ganja, and they walk around naked and covered with ash and stuff. You ever seen those yeah. pictures oh, of those yeah. guys in there? Oh, yeah, well, that's yeah. what the, that's what the, that's, and, and the reason why those guys do it is because, like meditation, you just breathe on air, right? Mm -hmm. But their their understanding is you take in the energy of the sun and you want it on your whole body. You take in the energy of the air, you want it on your whole body. You want your whole body to be connected to the earth, right? So they're, they're, that's the whole thing of, the, of, the, of them breathing in and out and, and being one with the nature, right? Mm -hmm. that's, and, and to do that, that's, they take, take off of their clothes because they're beyond all that, right? So that's... And the value of being connected to, to the elements and to be connected to Mother Earth, they value that more than civilization. And they're the yogis and, and the sadhus, right? Yeah. And that's what the Sasquatch did. Only they built a whole civilization based on that. Yeah. Uh, to, be a, to be one with nature, to be just in your natural body and to feel the air and feel the birds, and you know, because it's all about feeling and be on a very high level. So you, you, you're basically talking about these alien-looking uh, gurus and sadhus walking around, you know? So And they like to play, and they like to be innocent and, and all that kind of stuff. They really do, and they're jokesters, and yeah. they're really tender. But they also they also got that Kali thing going on, you know? And so if you come around and mess with their family or mess, with their, mess up their woods, they're going to yell at you and scream at you and, 
you know, yeah. get it straight. You know what I mean? Like exactly. get straighten. You know, do your healing work, do your meditation work, get connect to Mother Nature. Don't just come walking in here like you own the place. <laughs> exactly. You know we feel like we own. Them. Yeah, they connect with me through songs, through songs. Really. Yeah, I just was coming out of a dream, and they gave me a song, and that's how they how they talk with me. And that's how they communicate with me. It's through song. That's outstanding. <laughs> and it's old songs, and they're fun songs. But I'd love to have you on, Michael. I'd love to have you on again. I'll let you know how I'm doing. And yeah. all of our listeners, thank you. Oh, I have a partner named Brian Bland. Yeah, what happened to him? He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's part Sasquatch, so he's off in the woods. Okay. Well, we missed you. We missed you, Brian. So uh, I, I actually don't. Th did you actually send him a, a, a I did. in his message box? Yeah, I did. Because you didn't send me a message box. I did too. Just yeah. now today. I know, but hey. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> but I emailed you as well. It's always a pleasure to be with you. You have such a magical energy. Oh, you are, you are the the magic in nature. Thank you. Okay. We don't Bye, teach. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michael.